How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at the Super Mario Brothers movie, directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek. A couple of plumbers from Brooklyn, Mario and Luigi, voiced by Chris Pratt and Charlie Day, are inadvertently sucked into the world of the Mushroom Kingdom. And they have to work with Princess Peach, voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy, to save the kingdom from Bowser, played by Jack Black. And... that's... pretty much it. Easiest plot summary ever. Of course, the first time North American audiences saw the Mario Brothers on the big screen was way back in 1993. And the less said about that, the better. And that movie's poor reception is largely why it took 30 years to get another Mario movie. Was it worth the wait? Honestly, I'm gonna say yes. It does have a paper-thin plot, which is honestly pretty true to the games, many of which I have played. Hell, I played the original Super Mario Brothers when it was new. I'm old. But yeah, the plot for most of the games is Bowser has kidnapped Peach, go get her. That's it. Thankfully, Peach is not here to just get kidnapped this time around. She actually has some agency, which is true for some of the games. There is a very funny sequence where Peach puts Mario through a sort of training sequence based on the old 2D platformer games. And of course, Peach is able to breeze through it with no trouble at all, in heels no less. And Mario has to run through it several times because he keeps screwing it up. He must have had a lot of extra lives to work with because he gets beat up a lot, but somehow keeps going. I did like how they worked the Kongs into the story, even though Mario and Donkey Kong are typically on opposing sides. Their excuse for working Mario Kart into the story was flimsy as hell, but it did make for a fun action sequence. And I think the funniest character by far is the Luma that Luigi meets after he gets thrown into Bowser's dungeon. That thing is so cheerfully morbid. It's always got a smile on its face and a cute little voice as it constantly yearns for the sweet release of death. Much to the annoyance of its fellow prisoners. The Penguin King in particular was not having it. The animation is very good. Illumination has had plenty of practice. The characters and the Mushroom Kingdom look fantastic. I think they did a great job of bringing all these elements from the games to life. And there are more Easter eggs in this thing than I can possibly list. Appropriate, considering it was released right before Easter. There are references to various Mario games going all the way back to Donkey Kong and Wrecking Crew. Spike from Wrecking Crew even makes an appearance because Mario and Luigi apparently quit working for him to go start their own plumbing company. And the TV commercial they made for their new plumbing business features the song from the old Super Mario Brothers Super Show. We're the Mario Brothers, and plumbing's a game we're not like the others who get all the fame. I'm old. And there's a few references to other Nintendo properties as well, like Duck Hunt and Punch-Out. And oddly enough, this even shares a few elements with the old anime movie, which I did not expect. Both movies have a scene featuring Mario playing Nintendo, in this case he's playing Kid Icarus, and it's a little weird that Nintendo somehow exists in this universe. And in both movies, Bowser is genuinely in love with Peach and wants to marry her. And his troops are hilariously weirded out by that. Overall, the cast was fine, although this is once again an animated movie that feels it has to rely on big names when it really doesn't. And there are actual voice actors in the movie, like Scott Menville and Kevin Michael Richardson, they're just not big enough to be on the marquee. But do you need a big name on the marquee? I guarantee you no one is going to see this movie because Chris Pratt and Charlie Day are playing Mario and Luigi. That being said, I did like Chris Pratt better than I thought I would. He wouldn't have been my first choice, but I understand why they didn't want Charles Martinet to do the whole movie. Although he is in the movie. That voice would have gotten very annoying if I had to hear it for 90 minutes straight. Imagine what would happen if I did the entire review like this. You would want to strangle me, and no jury would have convict you. And Seth Rogen would not have been my first choice for Donkey Kong, mainly because every Seth Rogen performance sounds like Seth Rogen. And Rogan has even admitted he doesn't really do voices. I mean, Charlie Day, Keegan-Michael Key, who voices Toad, Fred Armisen, who's the voice of Cranky Kong, they were at least trying to sound like something other than themselves. Even Pratt was trying to an extent. Rogan, nah. The standout performance in this movie is Jack Black as Bowser. He was clearly happy as hell to play this role. And the love song he sings for Peach is hilarious. I'm so glad it's in the movie even though it's probably going to be stuck in my head for the next three weeks. The rest of the soundtrack, though, that was kind of weird. Of course, there's a lot of music from the games. Even the GameCube startup sound is Mario's ringtone on his phone. But they also threw in some random 80s pop songs, and I'm not sure why. I guess No Sleep Till Brooklyn kind of makes sense, since that's where the Mario Brothers are from, but the rest, I don't know, it was weird. But at least they had Jack Black do a song. If you're going to have Jack Black in your thing, you might as well have him sing. Unless you're Star Wars. 
they had Jack Black and Lizzo no singing. That is a wasted opportunity, but I digress. Overall, I'm just happy this movie exists because it really never should have happened. I wouldn't say it's a great movie, it probably had more easter eggs than plot, but while it is south of super, it's north of fine. I had fun with it and I can recommend it, at least for a matinee. And there is a post credit scene that suggests there may be a sequel, although considering how much money this movie has made, that was probably going to happen anyway. And that's all I have to say about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Till next time, take care.